Some of the challenges around climate change as affecting the region is not unique to one country. Um, whether you look at the, the erosion of beach fronts, you look at the degradation of our mangroves, the impact we're having from the sargassum seaweeds, uh, more severe storms and hurricane droughts, all these things are happening because of climate change. In 2019, we experienced Hurricane Dorian. Uh, they call it a hurricane from hell. The Secretary General Antonio Guterres from the United Nations said a hurricane from hell, and it was because of the devastation. Um, almost $9 billion worth of damages, loss of death, etc. So it was really catastrophic uh, humanitarian crisis for us. We are experiencing hotter days and hotter nights. We are experiencing more intense hurricanes and storms. So no longer are we looking at category three hurricanes, but category four and five hurricanes are becoming the norm in our region. We are looking at what we call a drying of the region, so reduced rainfall. Some predictions say something like 17% decrease in rainfall across the region. And then we can be looking at um, what Water scarcity and drought, so a reduction in our water availability, freshwater resources for the region. So some of these challenges directly relate to our debt crisis in the region because resources are required to address the issues. And unfortunately, we are some of the countries that make up what we call middle income and high income countries based on the traditional uh, overseas development assistance um, criteria, which is based on GDP per capita. And our countries are considered marginally rich, well off, and therefore we do not have access, or generally do not have access to what we call grant resources, concessional financing. And therefore what we need to do as countries is borrow money to address some of these issues. A hurricane happens, the country needs to rebuild, we must borrow resources to rebuild. And so this contributes to, addressing climate change contributes to increasing debt in our countries because we must borrow to fix and rebuild. So much money is now being poured into debt that many of our peoples, many of the social challenges that we face, we can't address because um, the money that is going to external creditors is so great that we are, as they say, fiscally challenged. We don't have the resources to do the things that we want. We as a region need to manage our debt better. We have to find strategic ways to also access climate financing and build the capacity of uh, civil society organizations so that they can access the funding necessary. This has to be a partnership. Governments have a role to play, civil society has a role to play, and we must work together and build that capacity because they are funding that government cannot access, um, and so civil society is in a position to do so. We have to demand the resources from the major emitters of these greenhouse gases so that we as a small, a small island in developing states, um, well, first of all, we have to, 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 to collaborate so that we can increase on the, negoti the negotiating power um, so that when we go to the table, we can demand from, from them the type of financing that is necessary to better adapt and mitigate those um, impacts that we're feeling because of the change in climate. The question of whether civil society is currently involved in negotiations that our governments are making on behalf of our countries is a mixed bag. <laughs> Some countries do better in mobilizing their civil society organizations and their populations at large to participate in these conversations. However, we can, we can say that there is a need for more civil society organizations to become involved in these issues. Part of that would mean being educated on some of these issues first to be able to meaningfully engage in the spaces. And then we can talk about having that lobbying with governments to ensure that civil societies have a seat at the table to raise issues that are more pertinent to individuals in the country as opposed to on a national macro scale, which is what governments generally tend to focus on. So civil society organizations, in terms of their priorities, the biggest priority has to be capacity building, whether that be through increasing education and public awareness on the issues and understanding the system within which we are working. Unfortunately, you cannot change a system without knowing the system. And therefore, as civil society, our main priority has to be to educate first ourselves 
and then the population so that they can be more effective in lobbying governments.